is happening YouTube? Blair McKeithen here, representing Formula Golf. Got a special guest here, back by popular demand, Cameron Sisk. Our recent semifinals in the U.S. Junior Am that just ended a couple weeks ago. Uh, many of you guys have watched that on TV, and I'm really happy that he came and joined our channel here to show us what he's got in his bag. So, Cameron, let's get this thing started. I'll grab the camera. All right. Here we are. So first and foremost, I want to point out this bag here. It's got a, it's like a cool blue camo bag. Uh, it says West on it. Camera, what, what does that mean? Um, this is the Wyndham Cup bag. Uh, it's a tournament that they took um, the 10 best guys and girls uh, for from the West Coast of the United States versus the East Coast of the United States. So it's kind of like a Ryder Cup format. Where was that held at? And it was in uh, Plymouth, Massachusetts at Old Sandwich Golf Club. Nice track, I assume. Oh yeah, very <laughs> nice, very nice. And and as far as I know, you guys won, correct? We did, we did. And the women's team, so it's all of you guys together. So the it women, was, yeah. So the points um, were put together, and um, I think it was the first one. I mean, to twenty four points, okay. and uh, yeah, we ended up winning. I think twenty seven and a half to twenty two and a half. So. so what was the format that? Were, did you have teammates, and it was match play against yeah, the other so two? Yeah, so you or? played with the same gender, a guy on your team for. Uh, one morning and then in the afternoon you played with a girl. Okay. Um, and then alternate for uh, so it started off best ball and then alternate shot in the afternoon and then switched in the the next day. And so then how, the last day of the tournament was singles matches. How how did you do in all your individual matches? I went three and one. Okay. Uh, so I won my first two matches on the first day, and then I only played one match uh, the second day in the morning. It was alternate shot with a buddy of mine named James Song. Okay. Um, we lost that. Oh, uh, bummer. Then, he's the uh, one from here, right? From uh, yeah, he's from Torrey Pines. Torrey Pines, and he's the one who's playing really, really good right yeah, now, he's right? Playing really well. So uh, that reminds me. Uh, speaking of, I believe this is the same person. So you qualified for the U.S. Amateur uh, mm -hmm. about a week and a half before you went off to the Junior Am, correct? Yeah, we. Uh, it was actually me and him at right. Bakersfield. And what did you guys end up shooting? It was some pretty dirty scores. Yeah, it was dirty. Uh, he was 15 <laughs> under. I was 13 under. So you shot like 65, 66. 66, 65. Wow. So t tell me about that, because a lot of a lot of the a lot of players or viewers here, or they're trying to be aspiring amateur golfers, and they want to play in certain golf tournaments. Um, how do you handle kind of the pressure in a situation like that? Because the U.S. Amateur is a really big tournament, you know, and to shoot 13 under to get through, it's pretty impressive. So like, how can you dissect that a little bit? Like after your 66 in the first round, where you're like, all right, I'm in good shape. Let's yeah, keep it going. Yeah, I mean, I knew I was playing well. Um, mm -hmm. The course wasn't too hard, obviously. Um, there was a few holes that you had to par and just get by, and uh, definitely was some scoreable holes out there. Um, but, you know, I was playing well. I trusted my game. And mm -hmm. um, it was, you know, I knew there was going to be some fatigue, uh, especially in Bakersfield. It's 105, right. you know, walking 36. Um, right. But, yeah, I knew I was one of the better players in the field, and you just got to trust that. And, um, so I assume best. that obviously brought a lot of confidence into your U.S. Junior Am, which yeah. you qualified for as well. With, I'm sure with a pretty it's tough to qualify for. Mm -hmm. Also, um, explain that kind of that kind of ride. I mean, you made it to the semifinals. Uh, you lost to the eventual winner in bonus holes, and mm -hmm. many people watched on TV, myself included. I mean, you hit some incredible golf shots down the stretch. A lot of like amazingly pure long irons into par fours to inside of 15 feet. I yeah. mean, you. Describe the nerves of that situation because you have a you have a crowd you have t TV you know hundreds and thousands maybe even millions of people are watching this. Uh, how did you kind of um, in internally eliminate all those external distractions or pressures? Um, I don't think you can really in eliminate them. They're there. I mean, you, you see the cameras, you see the people, um, but really you just kind of you can't really change anything. Like you're you're there for a reason. You got yourself there. Mm -hmm. Um, you're playing good golf, you know, there's no reason why you need to change anything or change your mentality. Um, so I just stuck to what I was doing and, you know, tried to let the cameras and people not affect me at all. But um, obviously it'll add a little nerves, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's good nerves. It gets you, uh, gets you going. Awesome, man. And you performed really well, and I'm imagining you're pretty confident going into the U.S. Amateur. You leave for tomorrow, actually. Yeah, I do. It's at Spyglass Hills, the, the stroke play, and then Pebble Beach. That's got to be pretty exciting, so uh, we'll be sure to be keeping an eye out for that. So let's get into your bag. Okay. Um, let's start with your wedges. What do you got here? Uh, I have the milled grind, same as last time. I just have the, the rusty uh, finish now. I okay. uh, just kind of figured out. I don't really like looking down on the chrome. Um, same irons as last time. I have the 750. And then 770 combo. Okay. Um, starting at the six iron. 
what shafts do you have in them? I have the modest nip-on shafts. Okay. Uh, they're, I think, 130 gram stiff, so they're a little bit heavier stiff shaft. Keep them a little more stable? Yeah. Um, um, are these I, the same uh, shafts that you had last time too? Yeah, yeah. They should. Okay, and then let's see what you got. I know you have a change here in your I driving iron. I, do. I have uh, the Kylo-A X-Forged. So why'd you pick that one over, say, the UDI or the 790? Um, this one flies a little higher. This is a 21 degree instead of the 18 degree. Uh -huh. um, so it kind of fits my gap between my 4 iron and 3 wood a little bit better. What shaft is that there? Um, you got the DI-7? Or yeah. DI-95S, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so a little bit heavier of a shaft. That's yeah. really nice. So it's just, you know, it's a good club for the you know, par fives, the reachable par fives that I come upon sometimes. And a lot, I'm going to have to play a lot of longer par threes in college. Um, so it's it's a good club. And obviously, I'm, for those who saw it on TV, I, it worked well for me. Well, I just did a what's in the bag with a, a friend of yours who's grown up with you, Tommy Jernigan. And he has a two iron as well. And I asked him if he sometimes or has a backup five wood for uh, certain rounds of golf or golf courses where you don't necessarily need a two iron. Do you have something like yeah, that? Yeah, I have a. I have an M4 five wood. Okay. Um, I don't tend to use it very often. I just don't. I just, it's hard to kind of separate from this because um, unless it's just a course that you really don't see yourself hitting it. But right. I know. I feel like every course I've played, I, this club always is a necessity right. somehow. Well, let's see that three wood here. Also, those are super rad uh, head covers as well. Mm -hmm. So this is the OG three wood. Yep. Um, I've had this for two and a half. Almost three years. Yeah, I think you've had that since the since I met you. Yeah. I mean, it's been uh, a while. Same shaft. I haven't changed it. It's, it's a Fubuki 70S tipped one inch. Okay. Um, yeah, this is one of my favorite clubs. I can attest that he never hits that thing poorly. <laughs> He's hit a lot of really good shots in the par fives, costing me money with that three wood. And, and there's is, a new driver. This is different than the last time. Yeah, it's the Callaway Rogue uh, Sub Zero. Uh, it's standard, just 10.5, nothing crazy. What shaft uh, you got in there? Hazardous, 6.0. So uh, what made you switch from your uh, TaylorMade? Because uh, last time we saw you, everything was TaylorMade. So mm -hmm. obviously the, the TaylorMade driver and the Callaway driver are the two best drivers on the market when it comes to distance. I thought just uh, this one performed a little better. All right. Um, definitely more consistent. Um, and I've kind of uh, modeled my game up hitting a lot of fairways. And uh, I definitely didn't want to lose that. Right. And um, I felt like this did the job, and it's, it's doing the job and right now. And what kind of putter you got here? This is the same as last time, the Spider TP Red with a line on it. I don't, I don't think you imagine ever changing, huh? No. This, <laughs> this has been good to me so That's far. That's the money maker. Nice head cover, by the way, for yeah, the ASU. Got to represent. All and right. what kind of golf balls do you play? Uh, the TaylorMade TP5X. All right. Yep. Sticking with the TaylorMade for the most part, yep. except for the driver. Another thing that uh, has happened since the last time we filmed here, um, this is, you know, last video was September of last year, so it's been almost a year now, this August 8th. Cam shot a 59 through the course of that stretch out here, which is the course record out here at Steel Canyon. I was playing with him that day, and we played for money, and as you can imagine, I lost. Uh, I did have uh, five birdies in a row at one stretch from uh, holes 10 to 15, and I only gained one stroke on him during that stretch. So tell me what was going through your head on that. Uh, it was a pretty popular story down here at San Diego locally about you shooting 59 because it's a magic number, you know? Mm -hmm. What I mean, I watched it firsthand. Um, I, we all tried to not mention it and, you know, say anything. Once, once you got to 10 under after, was that 15 holes or so, you needed two more, I was like, man, he's got to know now. So tell me what was going through your head down the stretch on that round. Yeah, I mean, it helped birding the first four holes. Right. That was, uh, that got it going. Um, I think I had two more birdies after that, which... I shot 59 on the front, um, and then going on the back side, there's two easy holes to start, and I parred both of them, so I was thinking, oh, okay, I've, you know, maybe, maybe not, and then I birdied the next two holes, and then when I hit it to about six feet for eagle on, what was that, 15? Yeah, with yeah, that magical 14, 14, 14 and, yeah. That was such a dirty shot. And I made that, and I knew I had uh, yeah. four more holes to make two birdies and end up sticking it to a foot on 16 and then having a tap in birdie on 18. Yeah. So. And it was a tough chip on that last hole. You're on a downhill lie and we, you know, uh, 
you we played a when we played that day we had a couple of members our club champion uh, myself, my co his wife, and then a really good tour player, Sam Sear, who's made hundreds of thousands of dollars playing professional golf. Uh, we ended up letting his family know through the course, like, hey, Cam, if he buries this last hole or one of the last three holes, he's going to shoot 59. And so they all ended up showing up at the end, kind of watching. And we were sitting on the last hole, and he hit one long on a steep down slope. I mean, it was a tough chip, wouldn't you say, to get it close? Like, Yeah, it was, I, I mean, I had just enough green to work with where I could land it barely on the green, and that's what I did. Um, and it kicked nicely forward. I thought it was going to go in for a second. Yeah, I think that we all did. Uh, but you know, it came down to about six inches, and that was a good feeling there. Yeah, it was really fun to watch, man. I was, uh, I've never seen anybody shoot a 59, so uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, basically, I, I guess that's it. I mean, you leave for the U.S. Amateur in a couple days. Uh, it's a big tournament. You know, we're going to be watching you on TV. Tell me what your goals are, though, after this amateur and in your college, because you leave in a couple weeks for ASU. Yeah, I, quickly after I leave for ASU, um, yeah, I'm looking to get there. I, I want to get as good as possible and you know, hopefully make a huge impact with the team as a freshman. I know I can help. Uh, we're, we're a good young team, um, so we'll see how it goes. And you know, I'm just going to keep grinding and let the rest take care of itself. Awesome, man. Well, thanks a lot for uh, stopping by again. I hope we can get you back out here maybe sometime next year over summer when you're in, get a little update. Of course. And uh, it would be a, a, even more cool if you take down the U.S. Open and play in the Masters in the U.S. <laughs> Open next year, man. I, I like your I like your chances. And everybody, uh, Cameron is, I don't really admit this very often, Cameron is the best player that I know. I fully believe in his game. He believes in himself. So if you guys take any note of anything that you hear from him, always have belief in yourself. Trust your process, trust your uh, your talent, and uh, and let everything take care of itself, you know. So Cameron, thanks again, man. Everybody, including you, Cam, keep on grinding.